Good morning. It's Tuesday, March the 2nd, and this is The Drill. Thank you, thank you. And now the uh, daily selection of uh, prayer for spiritual warfare. With my weapons, you will destroy strongholds. You are my mighty warriors. You are living on the earth, but you do not fight your battles with the weapons of this world. Instead, you use my power, which can destroy any fortress of evil. You have been trained for war and equipped with my weapons so that you can destroy the evil imaginations of this world and every bit of worldly knowledge that would keep people from obeying me. In my strength, you will heal through, or excuse me, you will break through all the enemy's walls and reduce his strongholds to ruins. You will turn back his sword and put an end to his splendor and cast his throne to the ground. We will cut off the nations and demolish their strongholds. Their streets will be left deserted and no one will pass through their land. Prayer declaration, deliver me. Deliver me from my strong enemy, from them that are too strong for me. I am your battle axe and weapon of war. I am your anointed and you give me great deliverance. I am your end-time warrior. Use me as your weapon against the enemy. Amen. And again, uh, I love these because uh, it reminds us that the ultimate battle here is against Satan and the devil. Rather than uh, this being a political war, it's deeper. The, the, the war that we're fighting, the battles we're fighting are much deeper. But uh, welcome to the butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers out there. I'm Ron, your host and the only true conservative in the United States today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it occurs to me that it's a good idea to, re- to explain or re-explain what I'm talking about when I always talk about defeating Uh, defeating the left. The vast majority, big difference between my podcast and podcasts or especially broadcasts by other people who call themselves conservative, Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, et al. They talk about defeating the left and it's always about politics. How is it that we can have a majority of uh, conservatives in the House? It used to be just Republicans. And then we found out that there's such something called a rhino, a Republican in name only, somebody that's infiltrated the Republican Party, run as a Republican, but votes like a, a socialist. But anyway, so you're going to have these, uh, this, the idea is to try to get own the House, own the Senate, and have a conservative in the White House. And then uh, Sean Hannity and everybody thinks, well, that's paradise. We're all set. And uh, first, the question is, how do you get there? And they keep saying, well, you got to vote. Well, don't, aren't, aren't, aren't people voting? And if not, why not? No answer. No answer from the uh, supposed uh, conservatives. And I'm telling you, if we're going to win, it has to be done at ground level. We have to go after the people that vote for who the hell voted for Joe? Who voted for Joe? I'm wondering, ask around. It's another good uh, tactic or technique. Make it known. You know, gee, scratch your head when you're talking to your friends and relatives and coworkers and fellow churchgoers. Gee, I don't know who the hell voted for Joe. Who voted for Joe? See if anybody will I'll be bold enough to stand up and say they did. You know, because uh, I don't see anybody proud of themselves. I don't see any parades. I don't see any any bold lawn signs that say, I voted for Joe and I'm glad I did or something like that. But anyways, the, the point is, if you defeat those people that are voting for Joe or voting for Hillary or voting for uh, uh, Nancy, 
When you vote, you defeat them, they get demoralized. What happens when they get demoralized? Next election, they stay home. Okay. Uh, right now, the only answer that Sean Hannity has for conservatives is get out and vote. And that we have to have more conservatives vote than liberals or socialists vote. And if that happens, then we win. That's his only solution. And so every two years, run out and vote and then cross your fingers and hope for the best. And I'm telling you, there are things that you can do each and every day to give conservatism an extra edge. Not only a daily edge, but an edge in a daily and cultural edge, but an edge in uh, politics as well. Defeat Nancy's supporters. Nancy will end up retiring once and for all. So one of the best things that you can do, if you don't know what the hell else to do, like I said, practicing on Facebook is an excellent way to um, learn how to defeat the left rhetorically using uh, various uh, rhetorical techniques. Uh, if you don't know, what what do you do if you, somebody comes up to you and, and starts giving you some socialist business and you're caught off guard? You're at work. You're in the break room at work and somebody comes up and starts giving you some uh, guff about something or promoting something, promoting some kind of a left-wing idea. It might be... Uh, you know, critical race theory. What do you do? If you don't know what else to do, ask questions. Why? Why is an excellent one. Another one that's even better than that is what are you talking about? What are you babbling about? What do you mean? Okay, so uh, the point is if they're going to win, don't hand them the victory. Make them earn it. They, the burden of proof is always, always on the left because the burden of proof is always on the people that want change. That's another reason why I say conservatism is not a movement. You'll hear a lot of people make that mistake. A lot of people that call themselves conservative and our movement, our movement, we have no movement because we're, we don't lead with change. We don't presume change. The left does. The left gets up every morning and says, uh, this is an effed up world, an effed up universe. What is it that needs changing today? And, and even worse than that, instead of going out and changing it themselves, they pretend they're a leader and a change agent and they start pointing fingers at other people and asking them, why aren't they changing? Okay, so if they see a piece of trash on the sidewalk, instead of going over and saying, I'm going to make a difference, I'm going to pick up that trash and put it in the trash can, they call a press conference. Or they start making a speech to their friends. Look, this is just, this is an example of what a crappy world we live in where people aren't uh, putting trash in the trash can. Best response to that is, why don't you just shut up and, and uh, put it in the trash can? Or demonstrate it to them. Here, watch. Bend down, pick up the trash, put it in the trash can. But again, the point is they're looking for, always looking for change. Fine, but the burden of proof is on them. We take every day as it comes. We change only when there's an obvious case for change. Slavery, Jim Crow, those kinds of things. If there's an obvious case for change, then we start looking to, uh, to make those changes and uh, the left is going to go ahead and presume everything is screwed up and presume everything needs to change. But again, prove it. Prove it. Uh, one of the, the um, catchwords of the day, or yeah, I'll just it, let's call it the catchword of the day, is science. That's the left wing um, word. And they keep saying that, and you'll hear it on the news. Uh, various government people will talk about science, science. We follow the science to let their minions know, your neighbors, your friends, or whatever, what the catchword of the day is. That they should be. So you, when you go to work, you're going to hear about science and science and science. Why? Because they've been watching CNN and their masters have told them what it is they need to say. Okay, one of the ways of responding to that is by uh, when they say science, you say fiction. Okay, the other way is to simply say prove it. Prove it. 
Another one is ask a question. How so? It's science. How so? How do you figure? How do you know? Okay. So ask, if you don't know what the hell else to do, find an appropriate question to ask. Make them explain. And uh, you'll end up, what you'll end up is with a reverse dynamic. Their dynamic is to wear you out so that you either join the group or you leave the field of battle. You walk away uh, demoralized and they just step in and take over. This way, with asking questions, making them prove it, they don't have any answers. Your friends, relatives, co-workers, they don't have any answers to questions like why, prove it. They don't have any, any answers for that. So they're the ones that are going to end up getting frustrated. Okay, you're going to get a lot of, uh, of looks where they're just going to, blank looks. They're just going to stare at you because they don't know what the hell to say. They were counting on what, uh, saying science as though it's a magic word and that it's going to make all people, uh, all, all resistance bubble and fizz. Okay? No. And when you come back with, uh, by, uh, with, the, with the question or the statement, prove it, they don't know what to do. Most people on the left are useful idiots. The people you see on TV, the politicians and the pundits, they're the ones that are truly down for the struggle. Okay, they know what they're doing. They know what, what and why and how and all that. They, so they're harder to defeat. Don't let the, what you see on TV uh, intimidate you because those are, you don't have to deal with those people at work. You're going to deal with the useful, the average useful idiot who knows how to say one or two words and if you counter them, if you question it, they don't know what to do. They just stand there with their mouth open. Back in a minute. Thank you, thank you. Another thing that just occurred to me is that uh, we're rapidly becoming the country not of the uh, people by the people for the people, but of the criminals by the criminals for the criminals. And then what's going to happen is that the law-abiding citizen is getting squeezed out, culturally speaking. Uh, look at it, at the, the way that the Democrats and the socialists, but uh, in the Democrat Party, are handling things. Uh, debt, lots of debt, no explanation as to how we're going to pay that debt or why it is that that's the best solution to our problems at this time. They don't explain anything. Because they say might makes right. The ends justify the means. As long as they get elected, that's classic what happened in 2020 election, November 3rd. The ends justified the means, getting into power. And that's what they apparently got away with it. And so now the question is, of course, what's going to happen in 2020? But the, all of that, pragmatism is a criminal mentality. That's the way criminals think. The ends justify the means. Okay, whatever I have to do to get what I want, if I have to break into somebody's house, if I have to knock them down, if I have to even kill them, then so be it. So long as I get what it is that I want, so long as I think it's worth it, I end up with something that I think is worth it. Might makes right. I got elected to office, therefore anything I do is automatically correct and beyond scrutiny. And so we are rapidly becoming a nation of going from being of the people, by the people, for the people, to of the criminals, by the criminals, for the criminals. Another reason that I'm thinking this is because of what's going on in Los Angeles County and probably in a lot of counties, from what I understand, the rumor is a lot of other counties in uh, around the country. And that is that um, in Los Angeles County, we have a socialist uh, DA. This is, anyways, the uh, he's rumored to be a person who has a uh, law degree, but that has never ever prosecuted a case. He's never been to court. That his his law degree is a means to another end, to a uh, socialist paradise kind of end, and so he comes in here and he starts making changes he's not authorized to make. 
he's making decisions as to um, whether or not there's going to be um, a, a assistant district attorney showing up at parole hearings, whether or not there's going to be sentencing enhancements. As the uh, the county sheriff explained that if you're going to take away a gun enhancement, what you're telling all of the gangbangers is, go ahead, you're endorsing their use of firearms and other weapons to commit their crimes. And it leads to a more um, criminal society. Also, what's happening here, if you're not going to get, he's the same one that supports, uh, whose supporters want defunding of the police. So here you are in a situation where if you're a regular citizen, you pick up the phone to call the police, you're not going to get a response. Even if you do, the person that you are going to call the police on, they get arrested, they'll be back out on the street immediately because there's no bail. That's another part of George Gascon's um, ideas. No bail. Okay, and then uh, even if they... Uh, you do get them on uh, on trial, put them on trial, they're not facing the same kinds of uh, sentences that they would normally be facing, uh, life in prison, etc. And so they're back out on the street again sooner. So what is that? What is the message to the average citizen? Lock and load. The streets become even more violent, potentially. Because if I can't count on the police department, if I can't, cannot count on the DA's office, I have no other choice but to take matters into my own hands, take the defense of myself, my family, and my property into my own hands. Because it's ideal. Who's going to arrest me? Huh? And if even if I get arrested, I'm going to get what? No bail. Because they, they haven't gotten to the point, and I think... They're going to get to the point, perhaps, where they're going to run this down, try to get this down racial lines. If you're Mexican, if you're black, no bail. If you're white, bail. You're going to have to put up some money. That's the only way this is going to end up making any type of political sense in the long run. But for right now, nobody has to post bail. So why wouldn't I just get a gun? As a homeowner, I go out and I get a gun. Somebody tries to break into my house, I just blow them away. Number one, I'm not going to have to, again, I'll be out on the street in 10 seconds. Number two, um, I, I'm not going to be facing any sentencing enhancements. Even if I get convicted and put in prison, I'll be out in no time. So what's the, what's the incentive to follow the system, to follow the law, to be a law, law-abiding citizen? There is none. So, again, uh, it's going to become a society. That's the question culturally. Do we want to live in a society in which we all are criminals? We're going to all be selfish people. We're going to be concerned with ourselves, our family, our property, and nothing and nobody else. We're going to be strapped at all times. One of the most dangerous places to live on the planet is Brazil. Brazil. If uh, yeah, anyways, uh, they supposedly have uh, the rumor is, and I saw this on Instagram, that Brazil in one year has more uh, homicides than most of the other countries in the world. They have something like sixty thousand homicides a year. I mean, it's a ridiculous amount. If you ever uh, see on YouTube, there's a a guy that has a YouTube channel and it's about self-defense uh, and uh, but using a firearm, you know, what to do. And, and what he does is he shows video clips of various um, deadly or um, well, sometimes not so deadly encounters around the world, from around the world. The vast majority of them are coming from Brazil. He just had one on the other day. Uh, in which it was, wasn't even it, it wasn't Brazil. I think it was Ecuador or something. Where uh, three guys pull up on motorcycles to rob a guy that's standing on the side sidewalk. Well, Mister Guy standing on the sidewalk happened to have a firearm. He just opens up on them and they phew, they take off. But that kind of thing is a daily occurrence. Every time you see 
anybody, uh, two people on a motorcycle, you have to be suspicious. People in uh, Brazil that have any means whatsoever, uh, middle class folks, have to live behind walls and barricades and uh, they have to have cameras and they have to be armed. They have to be strapped. And that's the direction the United States is going. That's the direction L.A. County is going. Now, um, the, there is light at the end of the tunnel in that there is at least the rumor of a, a recall of the district attorney. The reason they haven't done anything up until now is that uh, the law says you cannot um, uh, get a uh, anybody recalled uh, unless they've been serving for at least 90 days. So... Um, that needs to change, by the way. That's that's not that's that's a law that's designed for the for the ruling class. It's not a law that's designed for the average citizen. I should be able to initiate a recall as soon as uh, the uh, guy gets done taking his oath of office. Once he's taken his oath of office, I should be able to initiate a recall immediately. Not only that, but what should happen is the government should pay for it. They should pay to get the signatures. The government. We take that out of the out of uh, government coffers, and that the government will furthermore pay for the advertising for this recall. That's what should happen there. But again, if if we can get uh, uh, Governor uh, Gascon, which I'm going to I'm going to sign on to, and I'm going to advocate everybody in the county sign on to uh, getting rid of this guy, recall him, get him out of here, because I mean he just he acts literally like he's a dictator. He, he literally acts. And by the way, the county sheriff uh, went to a rally uh, over the weekend and uh, said that he backs the idea. Nobody likes Gascon except for his own people, of course. But everybody else, all his adi- assistant district attorneys can't stand him. Uh, they sued him in court and won over, over his uh, ideas because he just thinks that he can just... Uh, I don't know, by will, magic will or whatever, overruled the law. And he just expects everybody to do what he tells them to do. But that's, again, uh, where Gascon is more concerned about the criminals and giving the criminals a break than he is about the rest of society. And that's why I say this is a country in which we are, uh, there are forces in this, in this country that are trying to move us and create not a socialist paradise, but a criminal's paradise where uh, everybody will basically have uh, c- criminal intent all the time, 24-7, 365. Now, one of the things that I was thinking about uh, what had to do with being neutral. One of the, the banes of our existence, the reason that uh, conservatives, I'm convinced the reason that conservatives are not as effective as they could be is because they're encouraged to be neutral. Why? Because we're encouraged to be fair. We're told you've got to be fair. Fair to who? Fair to the left? Fair to the people that go out and burn down Portland, Seattle, etc.? That pull down statues? That want to defund the police? that slandered, that unbelievably slandered perfectly decent people that dared to um, uh, run for office or apply for, slandered Donald Trump, slandered Kavanaugh in the um, uh, Supreme Court. Those are the people we're supposed to be fair to? The ones that have absolutely no compunction about being, uh, again, that are going to act like might makes right and the ends justify the means? We're supposed to be fair to them, to really what amounts to criminals. I'm going to be fair to the criminal? Uh, no. I'm not going to be fair and I'm not going to be neutral. Every time this any subject comes up, abortions, abortion comes up, instead of discussing it in a, like you're having a, some kind of a, a debate, uh, an Oxford-style debate, I, I should make sure that I say, that abortion is wrong, it's immoral, and it can't stand. Should be one of the first things out of my mouth. If I'm going to be talking about problems with uh, police uh, aggressive police attitudes, I have to make sure that I say, look, uh, the, the problem here is police unions. 
we decertify the unions, and then after that, the problem uh, will start taking care of itself. All public employee unions need to go. Okay, that's a true conservative position. There's, it is ridiculous, it is contradictory to have public employee unions, the post office, etc. No public employee unions, because all they end up being is criminal organizations that extort money from the people they're supposed to be serving. It, that's immoral, illegal, and it can't stand. So that has to, I have to promote that. You do too if you want to be a true conservative. Look what's going on in California right now with schools. The uh, governor is uh, slowly but surely getting around to saying, open the schools, open the schools, open the schools. There's lots of other people, so, so-called experts, that have been saying for months, open the schools. It doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. Closing the schools is not going to prevent one case of, even so much as one case of, COVID-19. But the governor's been slow to do it because he's beholden to the teachers' union. So now we have the spectacle where the teachers have decided through their union that they may actually go on strike. They may go on strike if the governor tells them they've got to go out and and, uh, go back to work. They may actually have the balls to go on strike. No, all public employee unions have got to go. This is ridiculous. This is, again, where we're, we're, we're creating a criminal culture in the United States of America. No, it's got to go. So every time su- those kinds of subjects come up, uh, if it's uh, the police departments and you want to be pro, in general, pro-police department, fine, Um if, or military, here's an, another idea, military spending, where uh, if you think that the military um, needs uh, more money, uh, Hugh Hewitt says we need a 350-ship Navy, you make sure every time that subject comes up that you say so. Come out and say so. Don't approach it from a neutral standpoint. Don't get lost in statistics, for instance. One of the quickest ways to end up going neutral is to start citing statistics. Forget the statistics. Go with your values. How do you put? How do you create a statistic for values? You don't. So uh, promoting conservatism means exactly that, and getting rid of neutrality and not being neutral. And we're not going to be neutral because we're not interested in being fair. We're interested in shaping our culture and thereby shaping the politics of the United States of America. Thank you, thank you. That uh, brings me to the conclusion of another episode of The Drill Uh, Until next time, be honest, be smart, and be beautiful. I'm Ron, and that's The Drill.